All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we adopted the consent calendar. Agenda item um, three are reports, and we'll start with our superintendent's report. Thank you, Hello. Madam Chairperson. Um, I wanted to just uh, let you know that our teachers are back. Uh, we had our official opening today, and uh, Barbara was there along with Maggie. Uh, if you want to speak, you can. But um, we had a wonderful breakfast, and uh, I think I spoke for about an hour. I went over my time limit, but I, I, I had we had a lot of fun. And um, just uh, a lot of enthusiasm in the room. Um, some of the things that I touched upon uh, is uh, who's, who the new guy is, me. Talked a little bit about myself, not a lot. And then um, Maggie came up and gave some remarks on behalf of the school board, and that was well received. Thank you. That was great. Yeah. And uh, then we gave thanks uh, to uh, all our summer employees our, and the food service people that prepared the, the breakfast, uh, tech support folks, year-round employees, and summer school pairs and teachers. So that was fun. And we had new faces that we introduced, uh, new hires, each principal and came up, and our CT E director came up and introduced new faces in our schools, and then um, I got a chance to uh, talk about new folks in the central office, uh, which was fun. And then um, I talked a little bit about why I came out of retirement to come to Summersworth and um, and uh, shared that with folks. And then our focus for the new year, I told the staff today there will be no new district-wide initiatives. We're really going to focus on teaching and learning, uh, looking at our curriculum, which is a long-term thing, uh, but we're going to start off uh, starting to look at curriculum vertical alignment. We've heard that loud and clear from our, our administrators as well as our, our teachers, and, uh, and also looking at providing supports for our students post-pandemic with regard to social-emotional learning, uh, academics, um, and uh, focusing on that for our children and young adults. Um, also uh, talked about uh, my philosophy in terms of uh, some universal um, truths about human interaction and uh, shared with them uh, my thoughts on that. Uh, you'll see it in a video that I'm going to show you in a little bit. It kind of summarizes what that's all about. And um, we did, um, ta I did introduce our Title I Curriculum Director, Susan Blair. Um, she was well received. Uh, people seem to be really excited about that. Um, and then uh, talked about uh, relationships building uh, amongst not only with students, but also among colleagues and uh, working together on behalf of our, our students. And then I talked a little bit about relationships with parents, uh, relationships with each other. And then I gave some practical advice in this crazy national state political world that we live in. Uh, I showed a video about what it would be like if, if teachers were treated like football players. Uh, we had a video about a teacher getting $8 million because she was traded from Ohio to, to New York. And uh, there was a draft for one, one teacher who became an instant millionaire, and his father was a simple football player. And uh, so they kind of got a chuckle out of that, um, that uh, video, and then I uh, wished them well, and they took off to the buildings. I, I do want to um, just start, show you a video that kind of summarizes what I talked about today. And we'll, we can move this down. And this is posted on our website. It's, I think it's on channel um, 22. It's going to be, we're trying to get it on all the school websites. It's a message to the community and our parents and students about um, what, you know, what our priorities are this year. And uh, I, I want to thank uh, Bill Rogers. He's in the booth back there. Just a wonderful uh, teacher, educator, and uh, uh, I'm just amazed at the technology we have for our students. I hope more students take advantage of his class. Uh, and I'm hoping I can work with some students to put together a song about snow days. So I'm hoping that we can uh, work with students on that. So with that said, I'm going to step over here and we'll push a button. Hello, students, families, and the Summers Earth community. I'm Lou Gusinski, your superintendent of schools. On behalf of the school board, faculty, and staff, welcome to the 2023-2024 school year. We all look forward to the return of our wonderful students with great anticipation, hope, and optimism. We also look forward to partnering with their parents, guardians, and community members to support our students' academic, physical, social, and emotional needs in the months ahead. 
Our great custodians and maintenance staff have worked tirelessly over the summer to clean, repair, and restore all of our school buildings. If you see them around the schools, please thank them. Our school and SEU 56 administrators have been busy hiring the needed people to serve our students. They, along with school and SAU 56 office staff, have ensured the needed instructional supplies are available for our educators to teach and our students to learn. We are well prepared and ready to embrace the new school year. The City of Summersworth is blessed to have remarkable teachers, paraprofessionals, and other support staff. Many have been here for decades. Their professionalism and dedication to the city's children and young adults know no bounds. They serve our students with their minds and hearts. I'm extremely grateful and appreciative of them. My career in public education has spanned five decades. Over this time, I've learned that what educators do can be pared down to one basic concept, engaging in positive relationships with others. I've also learned there are some fundamental universal truths about building positive relationships. They include the following. One, all people want to be treated with dignity and respect. Two, all people would rather be asked than told. Three, all people want to know why they're being asked to do something. And finally, four, all people would rather have options than threats. I have asked the Summersworth School District faculty and staff to keep this basic concept and these universal truths in their minds when interacting with students, families, their colleagues, and others. I ask you to join us in the same way as we prepare our students for a bright future. We look ahead to an amazing school year. Thank you, Summersworth, for your ongoing support of public education. I wish all of you the very best. Thank you. that as we go along so thank you and then I asked the um, the principals today and other administrators to just give me their perspectives on um, the first uh, few days of school with staff and I'm going to uh, share with you the information um, this is about special education this came to me from Amy Pillsbury and uh, Lorraine Field which I think I introduced to you at the last meeting um, so these two um, women met with uh, case managers and also the related service providers such as speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, uh, physical therapists, and counselors. Uh, they spoke about um, individual education plans, timelines, and compliance and paperwork. That's really critical when it comes to special education. Um, the case managers do a wonderful job documenting and we want to make it as seamless as possible for them. Uh, there were Medicaid updates. We received Medicaid reimbursements for a, a lot of services including related services primarily and uh, and also for a pair individual pair educators um, so they went over some Medicaid updates because um, Amy and uh, Lorraine attended some training this summer and then um, they met today with the paraprofessionals uh, and they discussed their roles and also discussed uh, uh, the fact that some of this is a title have title one schools and helping them acquire professional uh, two certifications through the New Hampshire Department of Education. So we want to get them certified, so they're working on that. And then we spoke to them about the potential for training in Medicaid on the next workshop day. And uh, they're very excited, and uh, they were there to uh, listen to folks and hear their concerns and wish them a healthy and happy school year. So that's from the Special Education Administrators. And that at um, Idlehurst, uh, um, yeah, at her, Idlehurst Elementary School, uh, I, I actually observed this. There was a mathematics consultant that was brought in and trained the teachers and paraprofessionals on the best practices of mathematics instruction uh, and included uh, productive and unproductive beliefs about teaching mathematics, uh, levels of mathematics uh, cognitive demand, and the eight, eight student mathematics uh, pr uh, practices. Um, the consultant also uh, worked with educators about tiered level of interventions. Uh, you've probably heard of uh, positive behavior intervention mm -hmm. services in the past. Uh, there was some discussion around that. And also Kelly Hebert, uh, Idlehurst Reading Specialist, and, and Joni uh, Furland, uh, Title I teacher, uh, um, spoke with the faculty and staff uh, about the resources that are in place to support both the, the core reading instruction and interventions as well as Idlehurst M-Class -cla pilot which support our journey into the science of reading. So a lot going on in that particular building. Uh, also at Maplewood, 
uh, had a chance to uh, go today and, and visit uh, with some parents and students, but the last two days um, at Maplewood, uh, according to um, Principal McNelly, huge success. Uh, we have given staff time to organize their rooms and get ready for the first day of school while squeezing in some of our yearly safety training. Uh, and I, I think you're familiar with, uh, this was reviewed uh, with Max, this is our uh, safety and security procedures uh, uh, for crisis situations. So that was reviewed, Max uh, um, reviewed that uh, with folks and our uh, vice principal. And then um, there was a presenter from the Connor Climb Foundation provided a two hour training um, on Monday uh, on suicide prevention, which provided a lot of useful tools to, uh, tools to use with students uh, when we see signs that a student may need help. Um, and again, um, Max Ferguson, our assistant principal, led workshops on behavior interventions and emergency protocols um, using the five um, actions that the district has adopted. Um, we attended our second day with a Meet the Teacher event in which students, families visited the school, explored their classrooms, and met their classroom teachers before the first day tomorrow. And that was well attended. Uh, I had an opportunity to walk around and see lots of parents, lots of uh, students, and I actually visited my old school, school classroom uh, when I worked for the Stratford Learning Center. It's classroom number one where I worked my first year in public education as a speech and language pathologist and worked in a preschool program. So it was kind of nostalgic for me. And I remember the, the, the library and it's still there and, and it's kind of it's kind of neat. Um, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about the Summersworth Middle School. This is the first time in three years, according to um, Jim Lampron, that uh, they've had a full cadre of paraeducators. First time in three years. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the beginning of the year with a full, full, you know, full staff, which is really great. Um, he writes that the 23-24 school year is off to a great start. Staff were welcome back on Monday the 28th and met with breakfast, a staff slideshow, which included pictures of staff members, uh, summer happenings, and blue goodies bag, goodie bags were provided, um, uh, attached uh, with a sticker that read, roses are red, violets are blue, we appreciate all that you do. Mm -hmm. And all the contents uh, within the bag were blue, including Cool Ranch Doritos, <laughs> gum, chocolates, and more. Jim, Jim really likes that. He likes food. He likes to really promote that. So he's great. Um, uh, new and returning uh, staff were introduced to one another, and, and they took time to, to review the staff reference binder and some of those logistics. Uh, they had a team building exercise to help staff get to know one another, and they also um, uh, met and discussed uh, competencies related to PBIS and uh, universal team and uh, rolling out uh, their PBIS, PBIS program. Um, and then they engaged in front loading much of the need to know. Staff were given time uh, with their teams to, and to prepare for cl their classrooms. Then Monday evening, which I attended, was well attended by parents and students. Uh, they got some ice cream from Lone Oak, and we had big boxes of ice cream. And I think we went through like six big boxes of ice cream. Uh, we had black raspberry, vanilla, chocolate, <laughs> cookie dough, Oreo, and, uh, and also a chocolate with M&Ms. And I think the big hit was the cookie dough in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Oreo. Chocolate was big, too. I tried to push the red raspberry. I was giving extra on that, but the red raspberry was good. Um, and and uh, so they, they had the, um, the ice cream social, and, and during that time, um, there, were, uh, there was a great turnout, and their grade levels, essentials, Title I, athletics, SYC, and music, all had information tables for parents and students to visit. And, um, and so all the principals throughout the district joined Sue and me, and we served ice cream. It was great. It, all the, the principals support each other. It was great to see they all coming out and helping out with that. So it was a great event. And then on Tuesday, the staff met in the high school cafeteria for district-wide welcome back, which I talked about. Uh, and then they met uh, with, at, with grade-level teams to prepare interventions and enrichments the first week with students and classroom setup. Uh, and then Ann Parsons, the reading specialist for the school, did a brief literacy presentation uh, case managers with special ed met with Mrs. Pillsbury and um, uh, Ms. Field, and uh, and they also talked about um, WIN, which is the uh, event, which is called um, What I Need. It's a time when teachers will personalize instruction to further meet the needs of each uh, uh, learner in the classroom. So a lot going on in that school. And then at the high school, um, 
according to uh, Principal Thibault, Summers High School had a great start to the school year and we were very much looking forward to welcoming our students back. As always, we started with our community breakfast. Uh, this is an awesome tradition and an opportunity for us to reconnect informally and share a meal. From there, our time was divided between goal setting and department individual setup and curriculum work. Uh, and then they, they had a PBI, PBIS boot camp, which they're implementing this year and uh, focused on PBIS. And then um, they're excited, and this, I want to mention this, uh, for the freshman orientation will take place tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, and to give our ninth graders the opportunity to meet their teachers, tour the building, get to know where the lockers are, all that good stuff. Uh, and, and, and participate in some fun community building activities. So I just want to mention, tomorrow the students arrive at 7.30 and they're going to meet in the gymnasium. I'm hoping to get in there and uh, talk with the students as well. And then they follow, they'll meet with their advisors, go through block scheduling. And then at 12.15, 12.50, I want to go to this one. They have food, music, and fun in the cafeteria on the patio. Kona ice they're talking about. I have to try this Kona ice. I'm not sure what that is but I, I'm looking forward to having some Kona ice with the freshmen. And then uh, they'll go to their advisories and then get ready to go home. So that's what's going on tomorrow at the high school. And then CTE had some things going on. Um, they, um, they talked about reflecting on the CTE's role in K-12 vertical alignment. Um, they're hoping it develops relationships with K-8 teachers as they get ready to go into the, the CTE program. Um, and um, allowing our CTE students and spaces to support uh, learning projects because when you talk about CTE you really focus on project building and so hope hopefully there'll be some connections there with the eighth grades and um, they, they also talked about um, uh, inventorying equipment and preparing the lab spaces for students in upcoming projects and then um, supporting the transition of new staff to our CTE team so a lot going on um, I don't know if you two want to say anything about today I, I know it was grateful that you were there I, it's up to you you don't have to um, no, it, it was it was great. It was the first time I was, you know, I, I've attended and was invited. So um, it was an incredible, I mean, I, looking out at everyone in there, you know, from all across our district um, and, yeah, seeing just kind of like laughter and uh, levity and kind of just showing up to start the school year was great. Lou, you did great. You did a Thank wonderful you. job. Yeah. It really was kind of, you know, being here for a short time, it's, it seems like. We've been here for much longer than that, so thank you. All right, great. And if you want to say anything, you're real well, good. It was it was just a whole lot of good vibes, um, lots of good feelings, and there was a little dance party, so that was enjoyed by all. Um, and then also um, the that he's talking about the video that he showed was K and Peel who, if you don't know, you don't know, but if you do, it's so fun. And, um, and it was just, it added, uh, to a job that is, you know, not always appreciated, um, and understood by everyone. It was just really nice to have that kind of, um, support for everyone. So I was glad to be there. Thank you for coming. It's yeah. always nice. So that's it on opening day. Okay. And tomorrow the, the children arrive, uh, K through nine, and then okay. we're off to the races. Um, I my next item um, I've met with the administrators uh, at the building level and also um, SAU wide um, to talk about getting them to become more involved on some of your standing committees and um, so in your packet I put together I've got folks to volunteer and they want to actually they've asked to be participate and so going through your list here tonight um, you have the budget and review committee and uh, Katie and I will serve on that committee. That's, that's not changing. Um, and then buildings and grounds, uh, Katie and Jay are going to be on that committee. Um, and then for the educational programs, the committee outreach, uh, Susan Blair, a new hire, a curriculum would like to be there. Uh, Liza Coco and Max Ferguson and Mike Bluen. So uh, those folks would like to participate in that, in that committee. And then uh, under the negotiations and personnel would be myself and Katie. And then for policy, I think it's really important to get your principals in and have some discussions about mm -hmm. policy with you because they implement those on a daily basis. And so, and it also grows them professionally. Um, Kate Gove, uh, Devin McNeely, mm -hmm. Jennifer Spector, and Caitlin Carrington would like to participate uh, on that committee. So if there's no objections, they'd love to, pr to work with you. 
Okay. All right. And then um, I sent an email out to you, just informational email today, and I asked you not respond, and you, you did great. You didn't respond to me. Um, I've asked that we – I've asked um, Maggie if we could – take it off the agenda tonight because it's being reviewed again by the attorney uh, for the agency that's going to, you know, partner with us. So we could hold off on this and it's more for information. I'm going to sign off on it, but I wanted you to see it before I sign off on it. So I think that's my report. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Moving to agenda item um, 3.2, our business <coughs> administrator's report. Thanks, Katie. Yes. Um, so included in your packet is the FY22-23 um, budget of where we ended at the end of the year. Thank you all for coming in to sign my end of year reporting. That's all been submitted to the state. Um, as you can see from my report, we ended the year with an expenditure balance of uh, 325000 um, But as you remember, recall, we are using 100000 of that as revenue going into our FY24 current budget that was approved during the budget process. So that leaves 225000 as the expenditure balance which is right in line with what I was anticipating. I think at your last report it was like 205 is what I was expecting. So it's right in line with what we were um, anticipating. As far as the revenue goes, um, we did have unanticipated revenue of 416000 You are not authorized to spend any unanticipated revenue. You can only spend up to your expenditures and what was appropriated, so this money automatically just gets returned. Um, uh, most of it was 132000 which was passed by legislation. It was a re refund from New Hampshire retirement, and the intent of that money was to return to and offset uh, the tax rate, so that's what will happen with that. The rest of it was special ed aid tuition for preschool and then tuition for our students who attend the, our career and tech programs. And I, if you remember, I'm not sure, but during the budget process for this current year, we adjusted those revenue lines and brought them up to be more in line with what we've been receiving over the years so that we won't have this unanticipated revenue going forward. So that's what, what was done in creating this budget so that we don't have that fluctuation. Um, once these funds are returned to the general fund, um, the city determines what's used, um, how it's used, whether it goes back to the fund balance or it's used to offset taxes. Um, once the tax rate is set, then we can have, we'll have that final figure of what the tax rate impact is on these um, funds. And then the 100,000 we'll use as revenue going into this year. Um, these are unaudited at this point. Typically, we don't have many changes once the audit happens, but if we do, I'll let the board know. Um, also in my report, um, under food service, I did meet with building admin and uh, representatives from Fresh Picks on the 21st of August. We went over our current meal charging policy because as I mentioned at our last meeting, we last year was our first year of really implementing that policy because it was created during COVID when meals were free for everyone. Um, so we have some recommended changes that we're going to be bringing forward to the policy committee. We're still working on, you know, the logistics of that. And then once we're done, we'll be forwarding to the policy committee to, um, to look at so that we can get those changes made. It's basically just rewording it. Some of the things, the thresholds of money that we had in there just aren't feasible. They were really small thresholds, so we're going to just adjust those. Um, we also brainstormed some ideas to try to get families to fill out the free and reduced lunch forms um, to try to help us. So we threw around maybe doing a raffle so everyone who fills out the form will get put into the raffle and, and win, uh, win something. So maybe we can try to promote people to fill out the, for the forms. So stay tuned for more information on that. We're still working out the details. Um, also, our district was selected to receive some local purchasing funds through through um, the local food for school cooperative agreement with the state of New Hampshire through USDA. Um, these funds will be used to um, purchase New England grown and produced foods for our food service program. So we received um, just over $12,500. Um, the board has to approve us receiving these funds in order to utilize them. So I did put a, a little information sheet in your packet outlining the program. There's no cost or match or anything for the district. It's just funds that are going to come into our program. Fresh pick will um, use them to, to purchase the local foods and they'll keep track and, and give everything to the district needs so I just later on in the agenda it's just the board needs to approve accepting these funds and then for FY23-24 revenue, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we are going to get some additional adequacy. I did receive the final number, so they were originally estimating like 1.9. It is 1.6 million that we're going to get in additional funds. So we're in the process of collecting information, meeting with admin to get some lists together of items that we want to purchase and use these funds for. Um, we need to schedule a budget committee meeting um, probably next week sometime to go over those items. And then the full, it'll come back to the full board um, based on the budget committee's recommendation. 
um, and then it will go through the process of going to the city finance committee to get their approval and then the city council to approve the supplemental appropriation which requires two meetings um, for a first reading and then a public hearing so it's going to move fast because we have to get it all done before the tax rate gets set so stay tuned for meetings on that and I think that's all I have thank you great thank you so much um, quick the policy that we have to look at for um, was it for food in it's for meal charging meal yes. charging okay mm -hmm. just get that one down yep. I have a red line draft um, working that we're working on yep. that I will uh, submit to the budget uh, the policy committee Great. all right all right, moving on to our uh, agenda item 3.3, .3, our city council um, update. Uh, Councilor Austin. I have no report this evening, Madam Chair. Right. Ma Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. I yes. could. Um, just to circle back to the superintendent's report, um, Superintendent Kaczynski, did you happen to have any update for the public on the special education busing? I just, I had told, I had mentioned earlier that I would um, relay or, or that you would report something at, so yeah. Sorry, that needs to go on. I talked to um, uh, our two special ed coordinators and um, Jude Berry, who helps with transportation, and they notified um, um, first student that some parents have been calling, and they said they would return those calls to parents. And if they're not getting called, they can feel free to call my office, and we'll get we'll we'll get on it. Uh, but that's the latest update. Typically, at the beginning of the school year, you have some of these things that occur. Uh, I think perhaps the, I was told that the company may have reached out and couldn't connect with folks, and so they're they're working to get that solved. So, and I appreciate you bringing that to my attention today. All right, great. All right, agenda item uh, three point four: our student representative reports. I hear that they'll be joining us in September. Yes. Uh, and going moving forward to committee reports, I don't believe there are any, but I'll go through the the list of them. Um, reminder to start setting your dates, committee chairs. Uh, Budget and revenue committee. Thank you, uh, Chair Larson. Um, the Budget and Revenue Committee uh, has not met since the last meeting. Um, as was indicated earlier, uh, we are in the process of setting up a meeting, hopefully within the next week. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, Building Grounds and Transportation Committee, Board Member Hackworth. We have also not met, and I'm sure we'll get on that in the next week or two. Great. Uh, Educational Programs, Community Outreach, Board Member Wentworth. We have not met, Madam Chair, and that's going to get set up soon. Wonderful. Uh, policy Committee, Board Member Kane. Yep, uh, the Policy Committee has not met. Actually, I think we were the only committee that didn't meet at all the entire summer. So I think I may have been the, no, you guys, we didn't, oh, I think I was the only board member who didn't have a committee meeting all summer. Yeah. So yay me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We'll set up meetings this week. Okay, uh, for, for I will send out emails this week to set up meetings. meetings. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. All right. At least for the, this, this first, um, the end of the year, to the end of the year. There are no presentations this evening. Uh, there's no policies for first or second reading. Uh, under new business, agenda item <clears throat> 7.1 is to approve the acceptance of the U USDA Local Foods for Schools Cooperative Agreement Funds um, that was just discussed. Yes, Board Member. Can I make a motion to accept the Local Food for Schools Cooperative Agreement Funds from USDA and New Hampshire Department of Agricultural Markets and Food? Wonderful. Second. Second, okay. Right. Any discussion on this? Okay. Yeah. No. I just I did have a clarification. Sure. Um, so, Katie, you said that um, Fresh Picks was going to be managing this effort, right? Yeah. So the check will come into the district, mm -hmm. and then there's some record keeping. So they'll they'll submit to me all the foods that are purchased. So mm -hmm. when the food service um, department from the state comes down, and they always come like every three years to do an on site, I'll have to produce those things of what mm -hmm. we purchased. Yes. And so they manage all of that. Um, and so is this something that I don't, is this a new program or is, it, is this some, so this is sort of brand new yep. this year. Yep. So we don't know if it's something that'll be, go, continue. Nope, it says, um, it says in this um, sheet that I sent out that um, after the money spent this year, it'll be up to the food service director or right. us to determine okay. if we want to continue to procure that food from local vendors. Okay. Yep. And then the money coming from this grant won't have any impact on the free and reduced lunch any anything else because it's simply just it's simply just it's, uh, using the funds to purchase local foods from local okay. uh, New England vendors okay all right thank you okay any other questions yeah. all right all right all in favor of of um, uh, approving the acceptance of these funds say aye aye, aye. all opposed all right 
funds are accepted. Agenda item 7.2. This is the authorization for additional compensation um, for certain long-term long substitutes Thank per you. policy GCG. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Speak to this. Yeah. Um, so I've met with uh, Mr. McNeely and, and uh, Mr. Ferguson, Principal McNeely and Vice uh, Vice Principal. Um, Ferguson and the school di district has had a real difficult time hiring a long-term substitute uh, to cover a three-month maternity leave uh, for a grade three teacher. And so the position has been advertised for over five months uh, with no applicants until a few days ago. And uh, we have a qualified candidate who has worked for the district in the past. However, um, the individual will not take the position at the regular substitute rate. Um, and I think it's $85 for the first 20 days and it goes up to $95 after that. And since this is a long-term leave, uh, the teacher on maternity leave is not making the lesson plans for the substitute to implement, so it's a little different. And we really need, um, we really need a teacher to begin the school year uh, for our students uh, in that grade, at that grade level. Um, so um, you have a policy, uh, policy GCG that um, allows the superintendent to hire a substitute at a higher substitute rate due to extenuating cir circumstances with board approval. That's a new policy. So given that you know time is of the essence, school starts tomorrow, and when I sent this out to you it was you know next week, uh, and, and our students need a teacher, I'm requesting you allow me to exercise my authority with your approval as per the policy. I will bring the person in on a master step one per diem rate of $238.32. Now, if we don't do this, my fear is that we will be without a teacher uh, for our children and the person would like to, that we'd like to hire is willing to work for three months. And that's, you know, there many people want to work for the year. So she's willing to work for the three month period. I also fear that uh, we may not be able to attract another candidate uh, willing to work three months. So as a result, it will force me to look to hire somebody for the school year instead, and that's not good use, you know, of our, of our money. So this will be much more expensive. So I'm asking you to give me the authority to hire uh, this this person for three months at a higher rate due to extenuating circumstances. I hope that all makes sense. Yeah, yep. board member Turney, question. Uh, yes, thank you. I have two questions. Uh, so I believe you mentioned that this is a teacher who has taught before for us. What what did she teach? Um, it was elementary level. I don't know. I don't okay. recall the exact. I can email you and let you know. The no, experience. that's okay. But it was elementary, so she has elementary experience. Um, and what is there? I'm just thinking third graders, right? So these are little kiddos. So is there this sort of like a transition plan sort of in place because they're going to get used to this person for three months and then? Yeah, it's going to yeah. have to be worked out, yeah. and uh, Principal McNeely, uh, McNally will have to uh, address that. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, there would need to be a transition because it's, you know, it's the first three months with one person. And right. Like well, that. and especially, you know, little kid like they, you know, they form attachments, right? So I guess I'm thinking now how are the parents going to be commun um, uh, communicated with for uh, the parents of this, this particular class? Well, if we, if we get the vote to move forward, then I can, um, you know, authorize him to, to make the contacts and get information out to the family. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is for a standard three months where the teacher would not get coverage. Right. Because this is every two years for teachers that have to go in. So I think it's a pretty practice versus like above and beyond or detrimental to the children. It's, it's yeah. like not an above oh, and beyond. Yep. Is, I just wanted to clarify. That's yeah, no. Can can I respond to that though? No, I, that's a fair that's a fair statement. I wasn't and and I wasn't like I wasn't thinking anybody was going to freak out. I was just thinking it's the beginning of the year and for you know for little right. kids that might be like oh wait well, yeah, I you know I get used to this person and then that's all that's all. Okay. Yeah. Board member Marsh. I do appreciate the answers to those questions. I think that it's, it's helpful for me. Um, I will say that uh, I think that this uh, the proposal is it's fair. Uh, to the long-term substitute with experience. And it's also fair to those students um, for that extended period of time. Uh, and it's fair to the teacher who will be returning as well. So thank you. Great, thank you. Yep, so I'm looking for a motion to uh, authorize the superintendent f um, for additional compensation for the uh, for long-term substitute. 
motion, for that. motion to um, offer this long-term substitute um, increased compensation authorize per policy. Authorize the superintendent. Authorize the superintendent. Yeah, you, you, you do have it yeah, right there, yes, and I, yeah. I don't have it right in front of me. Is it right here? Thank yeah. you. Um, motion to authorize the superintendent to um, offer additional compensation for a certain long-term substitute as per policy GCG. Wonderful. Just second. second. Oh, there you go. All right. Any any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed. Okay. Um, Thank you. Authorization. We have no um, uh, agenda item number eight. There's no old or unfinished business. We have some future meeting dates that are our standard um, board meeting dates in September. It's the 12th and 26th. Um, let's see if I can see anything else here. Uh, closing comments by visitors. Seeing none, um, I, I'm going to turn to the board if there's closing comments by board members. Yes, Demers. Ironically, me, who's timing our 20 minutes here, um, I just wanted to give the flip um, experience of the first week of school. I have kids in almost every building right now, which has been kind of crazy to get to see and I've had to as you can imagine be in a lot of places as you were describing but I've also um, got to catch the vibe and like you said it was all good vibes um, I haven't seen this type of enthusiasm in a really long time I could have told you there was a dance party but not because I spoke to anybody on this board or Lou it was just because I was at a volleyball scrimmage earlier watching the JV play and some of the staff some of the customers like the people were talking about it they're like can you believe this like this happened like I think I know that the black eyed peas got played <laughs> and so I just want to give you that feedback because that's unique I've I've got a kid in high school, so I've been doing this for a lot of years, and that's not usually what people are coming up and talking to me about, especially um, staff and whatnot. So I wanted to say thank you to the board for all the hard work we've all been doing. Um, Katie, obviously, for jumping through all the hoops we asked you to pay for. Um, Celeste, your, your teachers in just it hasn't been easy and it, it's been really encouraging to bounce through these buildings as a parent and just know that the kids are going to a great environment not that they haven't been because i know that no matter what's going on that the kids i've never felt like my kids weren't getting what they needed but the the conversations that they've shifted and i i can appreciate that and wanted to just give that feedback um, we have a lot of good things going, a lot of enthusiasm for learning, for athletics, for just extracurricular in general. Um, and those are things that are so important in this community because of, you know, you know, to go back to some of the demographics that got listed at our last school board meeting by our visitor. Like it's, it's a tough demographic that we have to get excited here um, with limited resources and this and that and I just feel like we're moving in the in a really good direction and then I say this lovingly to our community to our teachers to people sitting on this board that maybe have had gut reactions throughout a few of these positive things we're doing if you're hearing and seeing this video or you're listening to the black eyed peas and you're on our staff and faculty today and it's giving you reason for like internal negativity you're like Ugh, see look at what they're doing this is dumb you're the reason we're doing this and i just want to make that clear you are the outsider now the positivity is running rampant so get on board or don't okay anyone else final comments yes uh board member clark i just wanted to um wish the k-9 a great first day of school tomorrow i met all the teachers and i've heard i've heard great things about the ice cream social and um the community coming together as a whole um, and then 
sophomore through senior. Hope they have a great first day. The following day, we're excited for this beginning of this new school year, so I'm thankful. Uh, board Member Tierney. Thank you. So um, I don't know if any of you, uh, the rest of the board members, got to listen to the um, presentation last week that the City Council hosted. Um, I know Maggie was in the audience. I was watching from home because I was sick. Um, but it was an interesting, it was a very interesting presentation about the public's uh, funding in the state and dealing with adequacy and everything. And I'm not a numbers person, so I'm not even going to go into any thing about like, well, I think this or I think that. Um, but I do appreciate is that um, there was a, you know, there's a genuine discussion, especially at the end. Uh, I mean, the, you know, presenter definitely heard some challenging questions. Um, and I just, I, you know me, I like it when we don't have just one partisan point of view about something, um, which I will say, I admit I was a little concerned. I was, I was cautiously, you know, optimistic that it wouldn't be. And, and I think that the presenter did a fairly just straightforward, neutral perspective. Um, and I think some of the stuff came out in the questions, so that's fine because there were people from coming from different angles, and I think that it's not an easy solution or just, you know, it, there's no one easy right answer. Um, but I think it's important information for the, for people in the community to understand, to be thinking about. So I appreciate that. I just want to say that. Board Member Marsh, followed by Brown. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate the superintendent's opening uh, welcoming message uh, to the district. Um, um, I appreciate those words of wisdom. Thank you. Um, welcome back, Team SAU 56. Um, administrators, teachers, all the support team teams. Uh, every new year is an opportunity to build um, from the year before and to innovate forward, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, I wish the students all the best to experience their individual successes, to lay the foundation of maximum success, maximum self-sufficiency for their future, and collective community of compassion for the future of the greater good. Um, as adults, uh, this is our moment, um, and uh, let us continue to engage where we, where we can um, and when we can. Uh, for our schools, for our sports, for our children, for our seniors, um, for those feeling down and for those who need um, a hand up. Uh, so let's model to our children and learn from our, and learn from them this school year. And stuck to my notes to try to minimize <laughs> my time. So thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> I also just want to say Congratulations to all the incoming students. Another year, go Hilltoppers. Um, thanks to Lou for your guidance this, this uh, summer. Thanks to the board for your hard work this summer. And it's nice, I wasn't able to go to, to the opening, uh, but it's so enheartening to hear the vibe has changed and if we can just keep that you know, community spirit because we're a community and it's just so nice that we you know, got over a difficult time and, and we're you know, back together again, which I, I just am so, so happy about. So I just wanted to say thank you and uh, welcome to all the new students coming in. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. I think that I share a lot of those, those um, sentiments. And I think what I was thinking about today and going forward is that, you know, one of our, and I believe I've said this before, but it feels like a good time to say it, is that, uh, one of our greatest freedoms that we have, I believe, is how we respond to things. And um, uh, the response from this community has been overwhelmingly supportive and positive and um, focused on the students and our, and our uh, community being whole and um, connected and collaborative. So I really just want to show my, um, and speak to my appreciation of that. It's 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 large and at times it's um just one of those things that shows what integrity really is and this is it this is the beginning of the school year um i feel incredibly optimistic i said that on behalf of the board i know it's kind of you know every year but this year just feels um you know coming out of covid and a lot of challenging times it feels like we're going to reset and it's going to be a great year with that, 
I'm looking for a motion to go into non-public. Per 91A32B. I make a motion that we go into non-public per RSA 91A colon 3 Roman 2 small b. Thank you. Seconded. Okay. All right. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson? Yes. Todd Marsh? Yes. Carrie Clark? Yes. Paul Hackworth? Yes. Tom McCallion? Yes. Marsha Brown? Thank you. Here. Barbara Wentworth? Yes. Susan Tierney? Yes. Mandy Demers? Yes. Thank you. Picking these up already, okay? 